Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Our first show from Carson City for the 2021 legislative session. State Senator James Settlemeyer, the minority leader, joins us for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're coming to you from the Bank Saloon in Carson City, which is going to be our home through the rest of a legislative session. And we are delighted to welcome back to the program State Senator James Settlemeyer. He's a Senate Minority Leader, he's also on Commerce and Labor and Judiciary. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Pleasure to be on, Sam. I appreciate it. Great to be in Carson City. First time I've ever uh, had an official meeting on camera in a bar, let alone Jack's old bar from the old days next to the Ormsby House, but it's fantastic. And I also appreciate, though, we're sending the right message. We're socially distanced, and but that allows us not to wear the mask, and I like that very much. And we're in the conference room, so for folks that are concerned that we're actually drinking at the bar, no, we're not. No, we're nowhere near liquor. <laughs> Um, let's start out uh, talking about uh, innovation zones. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor, in revealing more about uh, the innovation zones, uh, said that we should give it a chance, and I think that's absolutely right, and I think we're all looking for creative ways uh, to expand our economy in the state of Nevada. Um, but I've got some concerns here. Um, one, and, and, and I want to run them by you. So the governor says that there is no cost to the state. So we're not doing any giveaways, nothing like Tesla or Faraday Future or anything like that. But in reality, if Story County loses a chunk of its county to this new innovation zone, then doesn't Story County lose you know, potential revenue down the road? Absolutely, and so does the state in that respect because there's a portion of the property tax that of course goes to the state of Nevada, if successful. But in that respect, you might actually say it's like the Tesla deal. If nothing happens ever, well, then the state never receives any money, neither does Story County. Uh, as far as the concept, I look forward to the concept of talking about a smart city. I think that's a fantastic concept. I'd like to learn more about it. I'd like to see it succeed. I think the smart city has a lot of that, you know, value overall. Uh, as far as basically what he indicated, though, stating that, listen, because of the crisis, a lot of things have to change, and we have to change how things are done, I disagree 100%. I'm sorry, uh, you can't just use a crisis to your advantage in that respect. I do believe though we can structure something to create the smart city and let it go forward 
and let the concept continue under benchmarks and protocols without necessarily potentially going this route. But, you know, I haven't seen the whole bill yet. Nobody has. So it's kind of hard to say whether or not the whole thing is great or the whole thing is terrible without reading the bill. But off the cuff, when someone sits there and tells me there's absolutely no cost to the state, I disagree. One of the, well, there's lots of things to talk about with this. And, and as you say, there is not a bill yet, um, but that shouldn't stop us from at least discussing some of the issues. Um, so, you know, one of the things that was said was that, you know, this is too big for Story County to handle. Well, at this point, Story County um, has done a remarkable job of you know, accommodating the Tajarino Industrial Center. Not only does it contain multiple million square foot buildings, um, it also has the world's largest building with Tesla. It has Google, it has Switch. Why would somebody think that Story County couldn't handle that when they've handled this so far? You know, fundamentally, Story County has always been a can-do type of county. They've always had the ability, even when Tesla came in originally, Tesla was sitting here looking at Story County and kind of going, oh, you're a small little county with, you know, just three county commissioners and it's going to be really hard for you to deal with us and there's, there's no way we'll be able to have Tesla here. And within one day, Tesla was like, no, we're coming here. Uh, these people want to get things done. And they have a pretty forward-thinking concept as long as it's a Fortune 500 company that is a green company, environmentally friendly that they're gonna do what they can to get them there and they're gonna work on the fly. I've seen them give building permits and building plans being approved in a day. And then saying, if there are any problems, we'll work with you on those to resolve those issues. But they'll be based upon you know, actual problems, not, oh, I'm sorry, your neighbor doesn't want you here and we're gonna let them have basically the veto power of you coming to this community. So they've done a phenomenal job with every other business. I think that they have the ability to work within those confines. In the past, sometimes they have, though, indicated that they didn't necessarily want a bunch of residential. But I think they're realizing that you know they need to have some residential in that area. You know they would prefer to keep everything. You know have building here and have residential over here, and then have historic. You know Virginia City over there. But I think they understand that there is a desire and a need in Northern Nevada for more housing appropriately with enough water and enough infrastructure. And that's where the smart city has the opportunity to thrive if done correctly. All right, so you brought up water. Um, they have purchased water, but it's in the Black Rock Desert. And I would look at the Tahoe uh, or the Truckee River Operating Agreement Troy. that Harry Reid first talked to me about on a radio program he was doing back in 1990. He finally got that accomplished 30 years later to be able to move that water. Mm -hmm. um, having the water doesn't mean to say without an, an ability to transport it, aren't you gonna have to see you know, years, if not decades, of fighting between environmental groups, uh, environmental impact statements, uh, Native American tribes having concerns. Um, just because you've got that water in the Black Rock Desert that you've purchased doesn't mean to say that you can deliver it. Am I correct about that? Well, absolutely. The Troya, which is a Truckee River Operating Agreement, of course creates large problems. Uh, my family was part of the Alpine Decree lawsuit, which settled the water issues on the Carson River for now. But it took 58 years of litigation, went through three generations of lawyers. I mean, that's, I don't know, it's just mind-boggling how long it can take with the water issues. But dealing with water transfers from Gerlach to there, to say the least, are going to be problematic. There are other water sources that are potentially closer that could be utilized. Um, I don't know. Uh, going through the Truckee, as you indicated, is very problematic. Um, here's another thing that, that occurred to me, uh, and 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 you know, let's be honest here. Um, you know, I, I've been involved with uh, Roger Norman and Lance Gilman and the Tajarino Industrial Center since 2005. They became big sponsors of the program, and so I got to learn a lot about what they were doing. And they had, they bought the Azamara Ranch, which became TRI, and it was 102,000 acres. Um, but they only had 30,000 acres that were developable. A lot of that land was mountainous and, and not developable. So even though Mr. Burns has 67,000 acres, what percentage of that is actually developable? You know, and that one gets into the discussion because, you know, what you originally feel is undevelopable 
as long as the value increases, all of a sudden magically becomes developable. I remember flying into Las Vegas a couple of times and I'm going, what crazy person is blowing off the tops of these mountains and creating all these roads? And it was a real estate investor that was doing just that. Uh, so in that respect, as far as what's buildable at this point in time, you had the old painted rock subdivision, which I think was capable of about 2,500 acres potentially. Uh, some people say it's 20,000 acres. To me, I think with current prices and things of this nature, it might be closer to 10 or 15,000 acres potentially might be developable. But again, that brings circular back to the question based on the amount of water that you have though. That's the other aspect of it. Uh, so to me, you know, I think it comes down to the price. I mean, a home can be built anywhere, but the cost is the problem. A um, hundred thousand homes, uh, or I'm sorry, a hundred thousand uh, people working out there. Where do they live? I mean, we already have an incredible housing crunch in northern Nevada. Um, you know, you're looking at the, the numbers I've seen have been about 3,500 homes that they're looking at at Painted Rock, which is not part of TRI. Right. It is in Story County, but it's not part of TRI. Um, it, and and um, what companies beyond blockchains, which to my knowledge has built its own building since it owned the 67,000 acres, and they built that inside of TRI, what else have they done? The, the analogy that I've heard from several people, including Robert Lang from Brookings, is that Disneyland, well Disney, when they built Disneyland, they weren't prepared for all the second-rate properties that were going to be built up around Disneyland. So they had a first-class property, then all this second-class stuff and third-class stuff built up around it. So when they went to Orlando, they didn't want to have to deal with that. So they bought enough land and became their own, you know, essentially county, the state of, uh, of Disney, as it was called by Mr. Lang. Um, what has been done by Mr. Burns and blockchain so far to give us an example of what they could do if they are given this county status for blockchains? There's a lot of questions in there. And the first part of it was, you know, the concept of where are these people going to work? And fundamentally, that's part of the argument, though, by some individuals, that if you look at all the jobs out in the Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex, and where are they all living? Has not Story County not provided enough housing so that you're actually dealing with some of your own infrastructure problems. Instead, the majority of these people are traveling to Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, or Fernley, Lyon County. And so those counties are seeing some of the problems of growth. I mean, fundamentally, if you look at homes, traditionally, for every dollar they put in property taxes, they actually take a buck 17 to a buck 20 out in services. Where industrial, in general, when you throw a dollar at it, they only take about 67 cents in services. Now, compare that to agriculture, for every dollar I put in, in taxes, I only take about 17 cents in services out. So there's some argument that Story County needs to have some more homes in order to deal with some of the cost of growth in that area. Uh, now, as far as what has been done by Mr. Burns yet, he's trying to do a smart city, which he doesn't want to put resources in supposedly until at such time that he has the ability to make the program work. So I haven't seen anything out there of that nature yet that he's done yet. I mean obviously the largest thing and you know trick within Tolerant Industrial Complex is Tesla. But you know once Tesla came and that brings back full circle the discussion about property taxes because when Tesla came I went to the county and I said okay why, why are you wanting to do this? Why do you want Tesla here? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. You're, gonna, you're the only one that loses property taxes in this whole scenario. You're the only one. And they said, yes, we'll lose about $600 in property taxes a year. That's how much it generates on what's now forest and range ground. And we won't have that, we're losing $600 a year. However, the first time a business moves next to it, like Switch or someone like that, their property taxes go straight up. And the amount of money we'll gain is you know, phenomenal. So absolutely, take that money from us. So in that respect, this one's a little different. Now you're saying, all right, potentially when it actually happens, when they go autonomous, when they get, potentially, I think the number is something like 200 people live in the area, they get to have their own form of government by a vote of themselves, you know? And, or actually, no, they automatically become a form of government and then they have to start figuring out what they want to do. And to me, it's like, I'm not sure 200 people in a community uh, will have the ability to be their own form of government. 
maybe we need to let them grow a little larger than that and maybe take a vote as a whole. Now do you want to become your own form of government? Should they then have the right to come to the state of Nevada and say, hey, we want to have the discussion now about being our own county? Or what? Um, I, and and I, I've been talking to a lot of people about this on all sides of, uh, of, of opinion. And one of the things that came up was um, that there are all kinds of places across the state, you know, certainly Elko County, Eureka County, even Clark County, um, where, especially if you were able to include BLM land, you could put together 50,000 acres. Now, 50,000 acres is a huge amount of property to even contemplate developing. Um, 20,000 would have been the size of Coyote Springs if that were, you know, ever to be, you know, developed. And at this point, the water there is a, obviously a big question. But how, how do you think that Clark County would respond if somebody came and wanted to take a chunk of 50,000 acres of Clark County and develop it for themselves and, and carve their own county out of Clark County? I don't know. I think that the reason that they came to Story County is that it's traditionally a smaller county. It usually was and is a can-do county. It has three county commissioners. Uh, great infrastructure as far as uh, very sufficient natural gas pipeline coming into the area, double looped. Uh, you've got a train hub that's not, is fairly underutilized in many respects. Whereas if you went to Clark County, I think that they don't have the bandwidth capacity left within their rail lines coming in and out of Clark County. Uh, the fuel systems such as the natural gas lines are a little bit more taxed. They don't have as much capacity left in that respect. So I think that it'd be very hard to do this anywhere else in that respect. And I think there's desires to look at the legislation to even try to figure out how to craft it to make it less likely to happen in other areas. Of course, at the same time, I assume there's people out there that are wanting to go the other way, saying, you know, some people are like, no, we should make sure that there's absolutely no way any other area can do this. And there's other people saying, well, what if I want to do it someday? You know, I have a thousand acres, should I allowed to have my own uh, Settlemire County? Right, and you know, um, in some of my discussions, uh, you know, people are talking about Silicon Valley and how much they have loved coming to uh, Story County so far, um, that $250 million is not a huge amount for those companies to put up if they wanted to develop in, in Nevada. Yeah, and you know, as far as the money aspect of it, I think we gotta look more at the form of government is this the right thing to do? Can it be structured in such a way to make sure to try to get rid of some of the potentially unintended consequences or to make sure that everybody, the counties in question, Story County, which also affects Washoe and Lyon County like we discussed later, or earlier rather, can we do something to make sure that everybody, it's a win-win-win situation? And again, that still comes back circular, let's read the bill. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, hasn't been presented yet, but boy, a lot of discussion about this. Even this started out the governor's state of the state that day is when I first found out about this. And I'll tell you the truth, I was a little bit offended. It's like, okay, so you're talking about potentially taking 50,000 acres out of a county that I represent, and you're talking to me today, the day of the state of the state? We should have had this discussion a long time ago, in my opinion and sat down with the county and figured out a solution that maybe would have brought us to this situation. Well, with James Settlemeyer from Carson City after this time out. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything, from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? 
You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator James Settlemeyer. He's the Senate Minority Leader. Um, AB 90 uh, being put forward by Teresa Benitez Thompson um, that would, you know, look to seek money from counties um, uh, who are doing well, like Story County, to places that are being affected, like Washoe, uh, Reno, and Sparks. Um, good idea, bad idea? You're on I that? think it goes beyond that. I believe if AB 90, if my reading of it is correct, gives the power of those other counties to basically veto projects within those other counties. So if Washoe County didn't like the fact that uh, Tahoe Arena Industrial Complex, Story County, was building another Tesla, they could have the ability to say no or put a price tag on and say, you know, you have to pay us money because of the impact you're going to have. And the same thing with Lyon County. They could do the same thing. Is this reverse economic development? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Uh, and fundamentally, it's fascinating to bring it up as a subject with innovation zones because fundamentally this would allow Washoe County and Lyon County to say no to the concept of an innovation zone next to it. And does this have much support of the legislature at this time? I have no idea. Uh, I tend to stay out of the assembly bills until they come over to my house in the <laughs> Senate uh, in that respect. So I haven't heard uh, large support for the bill, but it was introduced. And when you introduce a bill, there are repercussions of that. And there are some businesses out there saying, all right, is this necessarily a community that I want to think about moving my business to if they're having these discussions? Uh, because there's a fair amount of businesses out there that decided we wanted to leave certain states because they were business unfriendly. And if you're going to entertain bills like this, are you not just as business unfriendly? All right, let's take another break. We'll be right back after this time out. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything, from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York, and because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator James Settlemeyer. Um, you've been very concerned about getting the public and lobbyists back into the building because, um, as I've explained many times on the program, um, lobbyists are a great point of information, and the good lobbyists give you both sides because if they're not honest, then they don't survive as lobbyists. Um, you went so far as to get vaccinated as well. Give us your thoughts on those couple of topics. Well, we have to get the building open. Uh, we're doing a disservice to the citizens of the state of Nevada with the current system we have. 
We need the citizens and the lobbyists in that room helping us, giving us different perspectives, telling us how they truly feel. It's a citizen legislature. The Constitution, Article 4, Section 15 says the building shall be open. The committee shall be open while the legislature is in session. And we're not. I have a huge problem with that. Uh, I think it's great. We've done the ability within the telecommunication realms we have, audiovisual, to allow individuals to call in now and also having more people from different places zoom uh, into meetings as far as presentations and so forth, but we've always had that ability. But adding the aspect of the phone, great. Why can't we be able to combine that in order to let more people testify from abroad all throughout the United States or wherever on particular subjects that are Nevadans? Absolutely, let, let us continue that. But bring back the citizens into the people's house. It's called the people's house for a reason. Of course, that's more refers to the assembly. So yes, I went so far as to go ahead on the last day that shots were available. I decided, all right, I might as well get the shot. I actually had had COVID back in November. Uh, also, it was not real fun this weekend because I did already have COVID and I got the shot. I got to relive a lot of those wonderful symptoms the last couple of days. And how are you doing now? Good. I'm back to where I need to be in all that respect, but it definitely was not enjoyable to have to relive all the symptoms again. Well, we're always glad to have you here, sir, and we look forward to seeing more of you now that we're right across from the building here in Carson City. Thank you for doing this, as always, and you were our first guest here at the Bank Saloon. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure, Sam. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Kenny, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers as we continue our coverage of the legislative session from Carson City. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching.